Hey guys, welcome back to my uh, Lost in Space robot videos. So today is the next step, which we talked about on the last video, which was creating the CSS or the central support system. So this is the structure inside the main torso of the robot that basically will support a bunch of things. Uh, but the main thing is that it is a, a structure that rotates on the Lazy Susan for the waist. So in other words, when the entire torso rotates, this rotates with it. So a couple things to keep in mind, a couple of gotchas, which I actually experienced myself. So you can make this structure out of anything that you want to. Uh, probably the main key question is, are you gonna have anything really heavy that you have to support? Because most of the time it's just lightweight electronics, wiring, motors, and things like that. Not, not a lot of weight. So if, if it's just that, you can make this out of um, acrylic plates. You can make it out of uh, plywood. You know, there's all kinds of materials you could use. I used aluminum plates here. So I got aluminum stock and then made these plates. This is a one -eighth, eighth inch on the bottom here. And there's a reason I did that. And then these are quarter inch plates here. And they're on half inch uh, threaded rods. Uh, and then we just have bolts on each side and on the top side of the bolt is a lock nut that locks it together. So this makes this adjustable so you can move these up and down um, at any position in the, you know, from top to bottom. So um, the reason I did aluminum on mine is because this center one right here is going to actually have some wings that come out and support the arms which are going to be actually fully mechanical and motorized and so they're going to be very heavy so they need something solid to to uh, be on so a, a thin piece of acrylic or something like that wouldn't work in this case because it would flex too much it has to be in my case super rigid okay so again this is just aluminum stock and then half inch threaded rods and half inch nuts lock washers and washers um, one thing that um, kind of snagged me when I was making this is, <clears throat> and again, because I'm doing this all like by hand, right? I'm not, I don't have a machine shop or anything like that. So um, what I did is I measured out the four spots for the threaded rods on the bottom plate. And I just use a, you know, a, a basically a ruler to basically measure out equidistance, right? But they're not perfect, right? It's not a perfect pattern square. So uh, what I did is after I um, got it marked, right? I took all these other plates here and I centered them on this plate, right? And then I clamped them all together and then I drilled through them all in the four spots. So. Um, I flipped this over and I drilled through this plate, this plate, this, and this all at the same time. So all the plates got drilled at the same time. <clears throat> and then I, I uh, basically uh, took the clamps off and then uh, polished out the holes so they weren't sharp edges and things like that. So then what I did is I put the threaded rods in the bottom plate. And so underneath here there's a nut and then you can see this washer, lock washer, top nut just to get the four rods mounted. But then what happened is when I started trying to put on these plates, the holes didn't line up anymore. And I was trying to jam them on and uh, if you looked at the rods, they looked like they were bending left and right, you know, and, and they were just so hard to get on and fit and I couldn't understand what was going on. And then it occurred to me that, you know, this is not a perfect square here. So the position that the plates were in when I drilled the holes through is the position they have to be in when I put it together in order for these plates here to slide easily up and down and everything to line up so you don't bend the rods and everything. And so when you're, if you do it my way, which is you clamp them all together and you just drill through them, what you have to do is first of all, uh, mark them on the top of the plate so you know which one is the top and the bottom because flipping them over also creates the same issue. And then you need to mark one little holes with some kind of mark. I just used a number one. Um, so if you look over here, you can see on the bottom plate right here, I just have a one here 
and then the next plate up I got a one and up here I have a one right so you need to mark them so that you keep the holes all the same um, the same holes that were drilled through with the drill all at once are lined up again because that's what my problem was and I didn't even think about it when I was putting it together it didn't even occur to me until uh, everything didn't fit and then, I, then it hit me that hey wait a minute these this is not a perfect square here these are just four holes I drilled and I need to make sure the plates are in the same exact position they were when I drilled them so just an FYI on that um, and then the bottom plate here this actually rests on the uh, top of the gear that's underneath here so let me pull this out so you can see this so So you can see here on the top of the uh, Lazy Susan, I have the gear, right? That acrylic gear that's going to drive the waste. And then I have these uh, screws that come up. And then what I did is I used some uh, washers here. These are fender washers. And I'm using these washers to create the distance I want or the gap between the donut here and the bottom of the torso so they don't rub together. And so that's you can use these washers and you can add as many as you want. I'm using three in this case, but you know, I could add another one if I want to make the gap a little bigger, or I could take one away if I wanted to uh, make it a little tighter. Now, the nice part about using washers like this is if, let's say on the bottom plate there, which I told you was one eighth inch, if I made it a quarter inch, right, I wouldn't need as many washers here. But, once I get the actual torso on and all the electronics and everything in it, if it settles a little bit from the weight, right, I don't have the option at that point if I was just using the thickness of the metal bottom plate uh, to change the distance. This way I can just take, take off the center support section, add another washer if that's the case, and um, it'll raise it up just enough like I need it. So, so right now three washers seems to be good. And um, I'm going to, once I get to the final phase where this is going to be all bolted down, I'm just going to put another set of washers right here where there's another hole right around here. So I'm going to basically space them so it has a nice, so the bottom plate, which is aluminum, has a nice support all the way around and doesn't have a large gap here. Not that it would really make a difference because it is a solid aluminum plate, but still, uh, it's just a little extra support uh, between the two screws. So that's what I'm going to do. The other thing I had to do is make sure I marked on the uh, gear here, which it, where's the front. And again, um, the reason is, is because these screw holes line up with screw holes in the bottom of the torso. And you have to make sure you have the right, um, the ones that are um, centered correctly. Because when you drill this bottom plate here to put this on, you want to make sure that the center support section is aligned the way you want it. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to put this on here and the front and the number one are lined up here because I have them marked. And you can see that goes on there and it turns, right? But when I have this towards the front here, you notice that the four um, half inch threaded rods are all facing straight forward, right? Because if I wasn't paying attention and let's just say I did it like this, this would actually be a problem later on when I'm trying to mount the arms here because now I've got a rod in the way on this side, right? So I wanted to make sure that the, the two rods were basically on the front facing forward. That way when I come back and do the arm supports, I can put like little wings of half inch aluminum bolted to this that would stick out and then I would be able to do my arm supports. So don't forget when you're putting this all together and you're, before you start drilling holes, uh, again, this is something I didn't think about it initially. Just make sure you have everything aligned the way you want it as far as these holes with the torso. And then as far as your threaded rods, which way do you want them? Do you want them facing forward like I do? Would you rather have it where the one rod was in the front here? It all depends what you're trying to do on the inside of your robot. Um, 
And that's it. So you can see that's the way that goes. So let me uh, grab the torso here just so you can get an idea of kind of how it goes on. But remember, the torso is fiberglass. And there's holes in the bottom that are uh, pre-drilled. You just got to line them up. And then that's what it looks like. And if you notice, I can turn it back and forth really easy. And if we actually look down at the uh, bottom here, you can kind of see the gap I have, right? It's about, I don't know, it's a little, it's close to an eighth inch gap right now, right? Now I haven't bolted anything down yet. And if you look inside the robot here, you can see we've got these the bolts sticking up here. So we'll put a fender washer on there and a wing nut. And there's six of these that go around and that will be enough to hold the torso on. Cause remember the torso itself the fiberglass body is not actually really supporting anything. It's supporting some lights and things like that, but all the support is inside on the, the center tower here that's supporting anything. At the top here, we do have the, uh, the collar and bubble and everything and the brain that's gonna go up here, obviously, but um, you don't need to necessarily support those on the, the central support system. And then again, these are all adjustable, so I can just by loosening these bolts move these plates up and down where I want them. So if you notice right now, this plate right here is sort of close to where the arm stuff would be. So if I, you know, had it coming out a little further and the out arms were mounted on here, right, that's close to where it's going to be. Not necessarily its final spot, but we'll move it around when we need it. But that's pretty much it. So um, I did drill a hole at the top here, or I cut a hole uh, on the top here for the some wiring to go through there, and also the the bubble um, tube is going to go down through there. And so I needed to get all this together basically before I could do the next step. Remember, which was the bubble lift mechanism. So now that I have something that I can actually put motors on and support things with, I can actually get the collar and the head on and then get this bubble lift mechanism taken care of. So that is our next video, which is um, how are we going to do this bubble lift mechanism for the robot? Uh, that's it. So that's it for today's video for the central support system. Pretty straightforward. And again, you can make it out of anything you want, but if you do it in this method, you'll be able to adjust your shells at any point you want in the future. Um, so thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next uh, robot video.